not taking personal readings at this time. Please do not get scammed by people posing as me in the comments section. Hello beautiful souls and welcome to my channel Rosology. So today's reading, we are looking into something a little bit different that I've never done before, but it kind of came to me and I was like, oh, that's a good idea. Uh, so we are looking into messages from the ocean or ocean spirits, spirits of the ocean. So for those of you that have a very close relationship or connection to the ocean, um, this will be a reading for you. Or if you're open to just hearing um, and receiving messages from the ocean, um, then this reading will be for you. So if this is something that's just a little too far outside of your belief system, <laughs> then this reading will not be for you today. Um, another thing as well is another way that you guys can also use this reading that I kind of realized is to help you connect to your deeper levels of consciousness. So like your subconscious and your unconscious. I will have a more specific reading coming out looking into um, like the conscious, subconscious, and unconscious, what's in those areas for you. I'll be doing that reading at some point in the future, but this is another way that you guys can kind of derive these messages. So anything that is maybe sort of any sort of experience or feeling or energy or emotion, whatever may be sort of just resting in the deeper layers of your consciousness, this is another way that you can connect to this reading or use this reading to kind of dive into and see what's going on there. So subconscious will be like the areas that we, um, the things that we see in our dreams, for instance, this would be the different messages. So this is like an, an operating system that's happening in the background. It's sort of on autopilot when we're dealing with the subconscious, whereas the unconscious is more so the place that we have even less of a connection to or less of an association with. And so that goes a little bit deeper. That's more so kind of almost like the shadow and stuff like that. Anyways, let's just jump straight into the disclaimers and the meditation so we can, uh, yeah, get into this reading. So obviously this is a general reading, so it will resonate with who it is meant to resonate with. Tarot does not control or dictate your life. So if you hear something that you don't like and think that that reality is cemented for you, then you are not using my readings correctly. I conduct these readings for confirmation and not answers. So you should not be hearing something for the first time. And if you do, please do not take that message without receiving confirmation from your higher self and your spiritual team. A lot of these messages should feel as though you are remembering them or connecting to them again. Okay, so realize that at the end of the day, your free will and what you do with it will determine your life outcome and reality, not a pick a card reading on YouTube. So please be responsible and accountable for your own actions and use this as a guide to help decipher the messages that your spiritual team has been trying to send you all along. Now, if you would like to participate in this meditation, this is a general reading for the collective again. So in order for this reading to resonate with you on a personal level, you have to be personally synced into the energy of this reading. To help you do that and help you select a pile with your third eye and not your physical ones, I will be offering a 60 second meditation. Halfway into it, I will be placing crystals for my clairvoyants that like to pick piles with objects on them. And after the clairvoyant pile selection, there will be a clairaudience selection where I play a different tone for each pile and you can select a pile based off of which tone resonates with you the most. So if you're drawn to another pile, it's because there is another message for you in that pile. So if you're ready, please get into a relaxed position. Become aware of your entire body, starting with your feet, and work that awareness up in sections from the feet to the head. Then take a deep breath in through your nose around five seconds. Hold that breath for three seconds and then exhale for six to seven seconds. Then ask your guides, spirit, ancestors, and universe, or all of them, to help connect you to your higher self so you can commune with the spirits of the ocean and also with the deeper levels of your own consciousness. So this is pile number one, pile number two, and pile number three. On pile one is appetite. On 
tile too, I believe is sodalite. On pile three is a celestite. Right, pile number one welcome to your reading so we are starting off with your tarot cards um, then I'm going to be pulling some additional Oracle cards on camera just a couple to receive some messages from some ocean spirits or the ocean itself however it is whatever your connection and relationship to um, the ocean is we're just gonna be deriving some messages from her um, as well as to the ocean in very many ways has been attached to a sense of consciousness and especially when it comes to the subconscious um, and the unconscious um, because the ocean has so much depth so you can even sort of take this as like a message from within your subconscious so if there's specific dreams you've been having lately um, just different impressions or signs that you've been seeing it could have a lot to do with whatever it is is sort of lying in your subconscious so uh yeah let's just get into the reading so when it comes to your tarot cards the very first card that we have for you pile one is we have the six of cups there's something about this being blurred out as well like this is already kind of giving me memories or something that is definitely um, alive within your subconscious already as you can see they're kind of sharing this cup and then there's like this focal point here it almost looks like a, a camera lens or something and then it's blurred out around so it almost reminds me of like a memory or a dream and then the next tarot card that we have for you oh, one second you guys phone call um yes yeah, so sorry you guys I had a important phone call I've been waiting on anyways though um, the second card for you, did we get to that? It was the Ace of Coins in reverse. I'm just going to show you guys what this looks like upright. It even looks like a pair of hands holding it right here. These look like stairs. It's very lush landscape around. And one main pinnacle, almost like a divine gift. And it was in reverse. 
Okay. So pile one. Um, pile one, the ocean's message to you, or the spirits of the ocean, or your subconscious, however it is that you are taking this reading, resonating with it. Um, so basically the message to you, or what your subconscious and emotional body is highlighting, is definitely the past with the Six of Cups. A lot of what you are feeling today, um, your emotional stimuli i guess you could say um like the the arc the your emotional archives has like it's like a lot to do with your past experiences a lot of what you feel today stems from past experiences six could be significant for you as well the six of pentacles here maybe six years old 2006 2016 maybe the month of june maybe the sixth of a certain month um it could have been a six month long ordeal or experience maybe you are a life path six or have a lot happening in your sixth house in your natal chart which would be ruled by uh virgo so you may even be a Virgo, but there could be a lot of transits there in your natal chart in that sixth house. Um, you could have a lot transiting there right now. You could have a lot transiting um, your sixth house at the current moment right now. Um, we do have eclipse season coming up. We've got a partial um, solar eclipse happening in uh, Scorpio, and that will be on the 25th of October. And then we also have a total lunar eclipse happening. I am so sorry, you guys. Like literally, the, I think this is the fourth phone call I've gotten in the in the last like couple of minutes. <laughs> okay, that could be something that's going on with some of you guys. I mean, like normally my phone goes off for you know whatever during readings and stuff because I'm sitting here and reading for like hours most of the time um, when I'm like filming these readings. It goes on for hours, so. Uh, it's not abnormal for me to get some phone calls, but it is abnormal for me to get that many phone calls in that short of a time period. So I don't know, maybe that could have something to do with you guys as reading, or it could just be my phone is lit today. I don't know. But that could be um, maybe a little bit symbolic um, or metaphorical about maybe the past reaching out to you guys a lot, calling you guys a lot, not able to like leave you alone and let you rest not able to give you any sort of maybe closure when it comes to the past something like that there could be a specific person or something from your past that keeps trying to reach out to you in your present um or again like i said it could just be that my phone is just lit right now i don't know what's going on i'm about to just turn her ass off but anyways yes you guys could have a lot going on with your sixth house either natally or with the current transits right now um you could as well be a gemini or a cancer now those details do not have to apply uh, for this message to be for you but I did want to mention them now someone may have given you something of high value that you have a hard time letting go of as well um, it could have been an item an heirloom it could have been money property a home a career this could have been some sort of asset that you purchased along with another person and you just have a very hard time letting it go um, something about letting it go is like letting go of the past or letting go of that person there's there's more attached to this item or product than just you know it being a house or just it being a piece of jewelry or something like that um, or this could have went deeper in terms of maybe somebody gave you a sense of like direction purpose value clarity security identity maybe they made you feel safe and secure maybe this was a commitment a promise a child I feel as though whatever this is from your past you got attached to it because either you thought this would be around for a very long time or it gave the impression that whatever this is is for life you know like ride or die type of deal um and this is why let's just let this helicopter pass one second now this is why it has been very difficult letting go and embracing uh new um with this ace of coins in reverse right here um for example it's easier to let go of like a fling or a summer romance versus a relationship that went on for some you know a while where you thought you guys were going to share a life together right or it's easier to leave a job 
um, with it being a side job or a hobby or a second source of income versus a career that maybe you spent years um, procuring or something like that. So something you spent a very good chunk of your life working for or building or creating or planning. Um, this is this is what feels heavy. Something about this Ace of Pentacles, it does feel a little bit heavy. Now, this Six of Cups feels long lasting or like something was supposed to last for a long time or like maybe you thought something was going to last for a long time. Some of you don't want to move forward simply because you have not opened up either your heart, mind, or being to something brand new. This is not wanting to embrace other options because you are still dealing with letting go of what you had chosen. The Six of Cups in a lot of ways, and for some of you, this is the case. It is a spiritual contract that you entered into of your own volition, which is why it has been such a struggle to embrace new because you have not decided to choose new just yet. So the ocean's message to you, pile one, is something that you are aware of on some level and she is saying to you, you are still closed off. You're still closed off somewhere. You are not open to this ace of coins yet. And when we're dealing with coins and pinnacles, we're dealing with something that's more so um, tangible, something that you can grip and hold. It's not necessarily a feeling or a thought or an intention or a passion. This is something that you can actually feel and hold. So there's something trying to come into pile one's lives tangibly and in, in a physical way, and you may not be as open to it. Some of you, you want to probably open up to this new thing. Um, it's just that oh, so much of your energy or so much of your conscious is pulled back towards this past place. And this is why um, there may be a little bit of an aversion to whatever is new. There may even be the, the word regret keeps popping up. I keep seeing it. So I don't know if that's something more specific for um, a, a particular person or story here. Um, but something about regret. I don't know if you guys are worried about regretting moving in a new direction. But a lot of what it is is like there's a lot of almost like living in the past here. Living in the past because there's a lot of focus on it. There's a lot of, of conscious attention aimed at your past. Some of my pile ones, you guys are, it's like you're living in memory. You're living in your memories. It's like you're, it's like you're living vicariously through your memories or something. And with this Ace of Coins in reverse, it's like there's something physical that really wants to come in, but you have to be open to it. And you guys aren't. There could be a little bit of trust issues here possibly, but this, I feel like this has a lot to do with your heart chakra. A lot to do with just not being open, especially with the Six of Cups right here. Six of Cups being ruled by Scorpio. Yes, and we do have that Scorpio. Um, we've got that. We've got eclipse season coming up in Scorpio because the South Node is in Scorpio. South Node rules uh, karma. Karma showing up or South Node showing up in Scorpio because uh, the nodes they stay in their respective signs for 18 months, a year and a half. So we have the South Node in Scorpio. It's been in Scorpio all of 2022. It'll be moving out halfway through 2023 into uh, Libra. But, um, and that's in tropical timing. Okay, so in Vedic timing, the South Node is actually still in Sagittarius. But for my pile ones, it's almost as though the past feels like it has a little bit of a chokehold on you. Some of you guys, you may be worried about whatever new that is trying to come in won't be as good as the past or won't make you as happy as the, it's like you're not open to giving something new an opportunity or a chance. Um, there's something here that's kind of, you're still a little bit resistant to it and it could have a lot to do with trust. Like I said, for me, this is all dealing with your heart chakra. Um, maybe being worried about something from the past repeating again, happening again, or just this difficulty in letting go of what was. So the ocean, the, the spirit of the ocean is saying to you that you are still closed off. You're not open to this ace of coins just yet. And you may still need time to agree before being able to fully move on. And the thing that I'm picking up so strongly with my pile ones is you guys know yourself so damn well. You are not one to be in denial, especially when it comes to you. The Six of Cups, again, it is ruled by Scorpio. So you guys are, are in no way, shape, or form. In the Ace of Coins, it rules all of the um, all of the Earth signs. 
uh, Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo. So there is a lot of emotional awareness here. Like I said, you guys are not one to be in denial. So likely many of you are like, yes, I am still holding on to something from the past. Maybe it's an illusion. Maybe it's a memory. Maybe it's an experience. Um, maybe even it's a trauma or a pain. Maybe it's a fear, um, some sort of fear that got produced from a past experiences. Or you are aware that you are not fully ready to move on yet. You know that you are not. You know how people deal with emotional availability when they're dating? For you guys, it's like you're dealing with like availability when it comes to timing. Very many of my pile ones, if you are intuitively drawn to this pile, you are aware of the fact that you're like, listen, I am not available for the future right now. I'm not available for what's new right now. Like I am not done dealing with whatever happened in the past. I'm not done maybe healing from it or understanding it or learning from it or or um, grieving it or reminiscing on it or closing it out or finding some sense of closure or clarity and understanding of it. Whatever it may be, you guys know you're not done with the past in some way, shape or form. And it's something that you accept it's not it, you guys are not my pile and that that comes up quite a bit but you guys are not that you guys are not in the energy that i'm picking up as the reader anyway you guys are not in this energy of where it's like why isn't you know why aren't certain things unfolding just yet you guys are very aware of the fact that in some way shape or form you're just like listen i am not available for that right now there's something I still need to wrap up over here with the Six of Cups. It's like you may need time to digest whatever happened uh, with this situation before you can move forward feeling whole and complete and available and ready in this Ace of Coins direction. So the ocean also wants you to know she'll be there when you are ready. In other words, this Ace of Coins is yours. It will not punish you by becoming unavailable because you're not available for it just yet or because you didn't move on quickly enough. What is meant for you, this Ace of Coins right here, all the aces, they talk about this divine gift, divine intervention. So basically, this is something that was given to you by the divine. The only one that can take that away would be the divine. The divine in other words is timing it is fate this is a promise so when it comes to fate it's a lot different from destiny destiny has a lot to do with like free will and autonomy um fate on the other hand is like saying either which way if you break it down between destiny and fate fate is kind of like when you punch something into your gps and say okay i'm trying to make it to this destination fate says you will make it to this destination destiny is more about the route that you take to get there right so when it comes to you guys the ace of coins is still it's fated for you you will get there you will get there um for you guys you're aware of the fact that time is waiting for you you know how divine timing just says okay now it's time boop and then it'll just pop something in your life my pile ones you guys have some sort of control almost over divine timing which sounds weird because we can't control it but we can in the sense that especially you guys my pile ones we can in the sense that it's like if you if we know we are not available for something um like just using that example if we know we are not emotionally available there's no way in hell the universe is going to send us our perfect person or soulmate knowing that we're not ready for that knowing that there's a possibility we may um, damage that connection and it's not something that we want to do but because we're not ready you know and we try to we try to take something on before we're ready for it we could seriously end up harming ourselves or the experience or the connection or something like that right so the universe is intelligent enough to understand that so much of our reality is under the control of our choices and free will so much of it I mean we're co-creating with the universe all the time but everything it is that it that we do when it comes to our own life so much of that has to do with the choices that we make day to day and so like um my pile ones you guys are just very aware of that you're very aware of the fact that it's like timing is waiting for you you know the moment that you open up for this and you're ready for like some of you guys you know why you have not come into your perfect profession or career yet some of you guys know why you haven't started your family yet some of you guys know why you haven't made a certain move in this direction yet a lot of you guys are aware of why you haven't made that move to a different you know why you're just like i'm not there just yet 
And the weird thing is that I'm feeling this pull where it's like there's like a, a half of you that really wants to move forward, but there's another half of you where you're just like I'm, I'm. You're so practical. You're so practical, and you're so aware of the fact that it's like I'm not ready to move forward yet. Why would I move forward? Why would I put more on my plate than I can handle right now? I'm not ready for it yet. What's meant for you will always be yours with this Ace of Pentacles in reverse and will stay submerged in the protection of the depths of the ocean until you are ready to call it to the surface. You are in the depths of the past right now and that is okay. She is saying um, that some of you, when you are ready, take everything from your past that you wanna clear from yourself vibrationally and subconsciously and give it to the ocean. So for those of my pile ones that are ready to fully embrace this Ace of Coins, this new beginning and completely leave the Six of Cups, completely leave the past in the past, Take everything from your past that you want to clear from yourself vibrationally, spiritually, and subconsciously and give it to the ocean. So maybe take a trip to the water if you can, or if not, work with water. Make moon or sun water. Um, wait for it to rain and collect some raindrops. A spiritual bath, something like that. I would suggest all of those for my pile ones. So for example, filling up like a jar of water program it with your intentions for example i've done something like this before um but let's say you want to move past a very turbulent experience um that has really had a grip on you from the past fill a jar with water on a full moon okay actually speak those past experiences into that water because the water symbolizes your subconscious and emotional body so channel those experiences into the jar and keep the water out until morning when daybreak hits okay because solar energy the sun is fire it's pure fire so it's all about purification so think about fire it literally burns everything up until it is no more until it becomes ash because i was really wanting to um me in the past, I was really wanting to clear my subconscious of something heavy, so I bathed my jar of water in the sun's rays every day at the same time for a few minutes, and I would meditate on that jar, and I would see the water and my subconscious being purified of an emotion or an experience that I wanted to be rid of every single day. I did this for a few minutes every day until the new moon hit a couple of weeks after, where for me the process felt complete and then I drank the water. So it's up to you if you want to follow an exact ritual like that or come up with your own. For me, I came up with that one on my own. It's just, I, I always allow these rituals to kind of like speak to me and I personally don't like following other rituals that I hear people do because it needs to just feel right for me. Um, but you know, have, have fun with creating something with your own spiritual team that feels right for you when it comes to purifying yourself and your subconscious of something that you may want to be rid of. So it's up to you guys if you want to follow something similar to that or come up completely with your own. Um, you know, you could sleep with a, a particular crystal underneath your pillow every single night, like clear quartz or selenite, something like that. Um, like I said, a spiritual bath, uh, doing that on throughout an entire season you know like i said we have scorpio season coming up this is a timeless reading but at the time of me filming filming this we have scorpio season coming up as well as the eclipse season so um you know that would be a, a perfect time during the entire season of scorpio uh to maybe focus on purifying those karmic uh energies and experiences and even connections so um totally up to you guys how you want to do it but make water the main component for alchemizing the dense energy present in your subconscious spiritual baths even smudging i'm seeing for you especially with this like blurred out sort of like picture right here so even smudging could be something powerful something with smoke here for sure with you guys my pile ones maybe work with a lot of incense burning things burning oils putting oils in diffusers something about that is very is a very powerful act of healing for you pile one let's get some oracle cards for you guys see what we see what we've got going on i'm just gonna pull a couple but let's see what pile one what else pile one needs to hear we have here calm before the storm okay it says something big is coming you are approaching the climax exactly like i said you guys know you're not ready you know something you know something isn't completely complete just yet and this is what you're moving towards you're moving towards the climax a lot of you guys know that you know that i'm moving towards some some sort of area i'm going to show you guys what's underneath the deck but i'm going to shuffle for one more we have sandbar discovery of new pathways and opportunities that's what you guys are waiting on you're waiting for this the storm to be cleared out first 
before you guys get moving to this this new this newness you guys see how like dark and gloomy this is and then how like bright this is and like it's just a very clear sort of day so it's like there's something here that you guys want to clear up from the past and you just you know intuitively spiritually you guys know it in your bones like i am not moving forward until i'm completely done with this past situation you guys know how some people they just kind of move on to like a new relationship after a breakup and it's like are you sure you're done digesting that that previous breakup or that previous relationship but some people they're not thinking consciously enough um to where they're willing to deal with the discomfort of being single so we'll just kind of jump into something else my pile ones you guys are not like that my pile ones you guys are like somewhere in your life you're like no I'm embracing this hangman moment. I'm embracing this discomfort. I'm going to sit here and deal with this. I'm going to flush this past out of my system. I don't care how uncomfortable it is. I don't care how long I have to wait. I don't care what fears I have to deal with. I'm going to sit here and flush this out of my system because I'm, I really want to move forward with zero baggage tailing me. You guys don't want the past following you anymore. Some of you guys know what it's like to have the past following you. Some of you guys have already tried to move forward and embrace new and the past still followed you. You guys are done with your present and your future being tampered with by your past. And this is why I'm picking up so strongly for my pile ones. You're just like intuitively and spiritually, you guys know exactly what you need to do. So keep listening to that. The next one that we have here, the sea turtle, slow down, be patient and persistent. Exactly. This is what I was just talking about. You guys are being um, patient and persistent. You, Some of you guys are like, I don't care how long this takes. I'm going to do what I need to do in order to completely be able to move forward or to move um, towards the new. Underneath the deck here, we have the green flash. The impossible is possible, you guys. Whatever it is that you may think, you may be doubting. So let's say you guys have been waiting for the perfect job, right? You've been waiting for that perfect job to come in. You want to move towards this, this new career, this new profession. Um, you guys may be doubting if that's ever going to happen. No, the impossible is possible. Expect the impossible to happen. Definitely expect the impossible to happen. Some of you guys are like life paths 11 or something like that, or you're having like an 11 personal year number or something. I don't know what they're called because I'm not that, I'm not that experience with numerology i love numerology because it creeps me out as much as i love astrology i will always say that numerology is creepy accurate to me it's like creepy how accurate numerology is <laughs> um but yeah some of you guys you may be having a personal year number let some of you guys may have just moved into a new place where the your address has the vibration of 11 in it Something with 11 is here. Maybe you guys have been seeing 11, 11 a lot. Um, I'm going to read this out of the book, but we have for you alive. May you delight in vitality. This is what you guys want. This is what you get. You want to be fully alive, fully present in the future. You don't want to move into the future holding on to any of this past right here because you, you know that like I'm not truly living I'm not truly alive and present in the present moment if I'm carrying this past around. So you guys are also trying to reclaim some vitality, a sense of passion in life. And you guys are doing this by taking your time and really clearing out whatever the Six of Cups past experience, memory, connection, whatever it may be. You got, It could be a lot of different areas where you guys are really clearing out the past. Um, so this is major. Some of you guys, you're definitely going through your Saturn return. Um, some of you guys, you even have the South Node. Your South, your your natal South Node was either in Scorpio, or your natal North Node was in Scorpio, and this is why you guys have possibly this entire year of 2022 has been dedicated to just like I'm hermiting. I am literally just focusing. I don't want nothing new right now because every time I get something new something with my past gets struck up or you know it is something is it's like something is following you guys or haunting you guys and you want to get done with it you really want to bury it for good um underneath the deck here we have exactly resilient may your soul weather the storms just like it says calm before the storm right here resilient you guys are so resilient i'm gonna read both of these out of the book for you guys so okay let's see what it says Okay, and Alive here says, may you delight in vitality. Reflection is 
The sea is an all-encompassing sensation, exuberant vitality, constant movement. It is stepping consciously over edges. To walk into a cold sea is to know the limits of your physical and mental capacity exactly and to choose to live a little of your life right there. The blessings connected to this card says, may you pursue adventure, may you test your limitations, may you feel all the feelings, may you love and leap, may you tingle. The mantra here says, I am here to be alive. With resilient, resilient says, may your soul weather the storms. Reflection is the pebbles and deer turned in, turned in the shoreline. Beached between tides, sea glazed, they shine. Solid, they face the waves, inevitable return, as proof that in the unending wash, even the hardest of rocks is tumbled smooth. Wow, so this is a smoothing process that you guys are doing by weathering the storms of the past or weathering whatever storm you guys may be going through currently. So the, uh, with this card right here, the ocean, the ocean spirits, your subconscious, it even wants to highlight whatever storms you guys may be dealing with right now, whether this storm came from the past or this is just something that has manifested into in your present um it's also saying that whatever it is that you're going through whatever challenges storms you're going through right now it is actually smoothing out your life it's smoothing out your your reality your vibration your subconscious even so there's a lot of things you're you guys are moving into more smoother calmer waters basically blessings uh attached to this card says may you be irrepressible may you sculpt a bold life from the challenges and upturns it says may you tend to your resilience in the lulls between the tides mantra here says as my challenges shape me my soul grows and pile uh two no pile one i'm so sorry pile one <laughs> pile one thank you guys so very much for tuning in this is all that i'm seeing for you guys let me take this time to thank your beautiful guides my beautiful guides our higher self the ocean as well as spirit itself the most high for delivering these messages today hopefully you all come back to visit sometime soon and until next time stay safe healthy blessed and keep conquering the world bye you guys Pile number two, welcome to your reading. So we are starting off with your tarot cards and then I'm gonna be pulling some additional oracle cards on camera to uh, check out some messages from the ocean or the spirits of the ocean. Another way that you guys can receive these messages is um, by connecting them to your consciousness. So your subconscious and unconscious depths um, because the ocean in very many ways has been tied to uh, conscious and the deeper levels of our consciousness like the subconscious and the unconscious so if you guys want to take these messages as though they are coming from the ocean the spirits of the ocean um, or even the deeper levels of your consciousness it is entirely up to you but anyways let's just get started pile two to see what is um, going on here so the very first card that we have for you pile two we have the full yeah that's in reverse full in reverse interesting and then we have the nine of coins for you pile two the first thing that i heard for you is something or someone needs you more than you need them the ocean is saying it's time for you to break away to go solo become independent to do something on your own to create something on your own you guys have like a lot of ideas or one main idea you maybe been sitting on or thinking about or making plans for um but just maybe haven't acted on or moved on just yet you may be wondering how is this going to turn out it's the fact that it's so uncertain and it's like you're kind of staring into like the blackness of the future because the future is unwritten so we don't know what's in the future right the future is definitely decided by uh, a lot of the choices and decisions that we make um, as well as a lot of external things happening um, it's all a co-creation mm -hmm. right especially when we're dealing with the future but whatever it is that you guys are harboring within your spirit and you haven't necessarily brought it to fruition just yet um, nine of coins 
nine of coins a lot of this has to do with a sense of almost like legacy or purpose or this is something that you're going to be known for this is something that is going to be attached to you and your name and it also has a way of bringing in a lot of um a financial gain a lot of material gain a lot of material abundance nine of coins is definitely the card of abundance it's just that the, with this full in reverse over here you guys are just a little bit worried about okay how do i execute this or how do i how do i take the first step because the fool is the very first card in um tarot and with it in reverse it's you know the fool is upright it talks about somebody that is he's foolish not in a bad or negative way he's foolish in the way that he doesn't know it's like starting off you know first day in school just because you don't know how your abcs doesn't mean you're actually foolish it just means you haven't learned it yet you haven't been educated yet so the fool is somebody that steps out on faith and he doesn't even necessarily know that that's what he's doing as we spoke about him in depth um, on Patreon is the fool is just very like, I'm just going to try it. So it's like, just think about something that you, you know, like, for example, take a relationship that you're getting into. You don't know how that's going to end up. You don't know if, if you guys are going to end up for the rest of your lives, if this is not going to make it past a year. You don't know what's going to come of it, right? But you walk towards and you try it out anyways, right? So that's the literal equivalence of the fool. He just doesn't know how something is going to turn out. He's all of us, <laughs> which is why the fool is the very first card. Actually, he's card number zero to show that the fool is present in each and every card, even the final card, um, like the world and all of the court cards so uh the fool is in everything because we just simply don't as human beings we don't know for fact for certain how something is going to work out and when it comes to the fool he's not even aware that he is creating or co-creating his future he's just doing what feels most natural he's just following an instinct or following uh, an idea or following a passion or following something he wants to do and very many times we don't we don't know that it's going to end up being maybe a major chapter in our lives right so just think back to the the start of any sort of major chapter in your life you didn't even know that was the beginning of it with all that being said you're fools in reverse so that means that you guys have an awareness that whatever new step you take you're not going to be able to return from it in a sense there's something that you are meant to do independently or on your own the issue is someone feeling like if i make this huge stride in this direction things will never be the same it's like it's like going to college and knowing that your friendships that you've had since you were a kid will change for sure um 444 may be significant for you as well um because i just saw uh 414 so it, and but I thought it was 444 so that may be significant for you or maybe 414 maybe fours are significant maybe your life path four there's definitely no way to keep something intact pile two there's no way to keep something the same if that's what you're worried about or concerned about I don't know why but there's a person around someone here coming through where they either think or may have said out loud that you think you're better than them somebody may have like Somebody was projecting onto some of my pile twos here thinking that like your ego was out of control or something like that because something, maybe you got an opportunity or something started working out for you. Maybe you had a glow up. Maybe you have, maybe something is really going great for you with this nine of pentacles right here. If it hasn't happened just yet, pile two, it will. There's about to be, and not just one thing. This is the nine of coins, okay? It's not the ace of coins. Ace of coins can lead to a lot of different avenues, but the nine of coins is talking about there are a lot of different avenues here. And so when we're dealing with um when we're dealing with the nine of coins, um, this is talking about a lot of different incomes coming in because coins is um it it's the pinnacles. Pinnacles is connected to the earth element. Earth element is feminine energy. Feminine energy is receptive. Okay, so when we're dealing with pentacles this is more so receptive type energy in a lot of ways and so with the nine of coins this is about a lot of different things coming in for you from a lot of different avenues um there could be somebody around you or people around you witnessing this and they feel some type of way about where you're going with full and reverse right here um there's no way to keep something intact your energy here is coming through so humble and considerate 
and and for a lot of you guys you're just very proud of yourself you're proud for taking a first step somewhere because you guys struggle with that for a while with this full in reverse right here and when you finally did do it or when you finally do do it it leads to this nine of coins it leads to a lot of personal success personal abundance right and um, a lot of things coming in for you personally this isn't about everybody else getting in on your blessings if that was the case the ten of pentacles would be here this is the nine of pentacles this is about you specifically being the recipient of a lot of different blessings or a lot of abundance or a lot of different opportunities a lot of different physical tangible things coming into your life that you would regard as a blessing or a good thing or an oper uh, an opportunity um, something that you can turn into something else, something that you can invest, something that you can flip, something that you can you can take it and make more value out of it or get more value out of it or earn more from it. So that there's a lot of that coming in, a lot of avenues, a lot of doors are opening up for you. And it's not just doors opening up. Again, we have the pinnacles here. So this is about actual physical opportunities meeting you, coming towards you and actually um, bringing some sort of physical result manifesting in this physical way where other people can actually see this change in energy for you they can see this change in opportunities for you and and it's a change again because we have the fool here and um someone around you someone around you may be thinking that like you're getting a big head because of this but again it's a projection i'm seeing it clearly as though it's a projection as the reader anyways that's what i'm saying is that it's a projection because your energy is so humble your energy is very considerate so somebody in this pile could possibly be thinking about not taking a better deal or opportunity somewhere because you're worried about someone else's feelings or how they're going to react to it. You don't want to be looked at in a certain way. You don't want to be looked at as though like maybe you're you're leaving, you're leaving, um, you're forgetting where you came from or you're leaving certain people in the past or something like that. Maybe you're worried about being seen that way. You're worried about maybe these um the people, relationships and connections around you. You may be worried about what they think of you if all of these good things start happening for you listen this is this is like an element of um not survivor's guilt but it's like blessings are very very odd when you're surrounded by the wrong fucking people because they can make a blessing feel like a curse in a way when you're surrounded by the wrong people and things start happening for you in a good way manipulative people will make you feel as though you've done something wrong because good things start working out in your life i've been there i've experienced it and many people have when things start working out in their lives this is it's a very specific sort of ordeal here but that's what's coming through for me is being worried about how it's going to make someone else feel Okay, so well, pile two, unfortunately for you, it's your time to shine in spite of who it pisses off. So don't don't care. And I know that's easy for me to say because I'm not you. I'm not going through it. Like I said, I've been there before. And even for me, it took me a long time because I even went through this with my own blood. I went through this with people that I considered best friends. I went through this even romantically where, I mean, literally the, the closest people that I was surrounded by, you'd be shocked once you're able to start taking care of yourself or doing things for yourself. The insecurities that arise in the people around you, it's a real blessing if you don't deal with that in your closest connections. Um, but for me, I dealt with it in a lot of my closest connections and it was devastating for a while. I really felt guilty and ashamed of good things happening to me and it's like this element of like almost like survivor's guilt but it's like blessings guilt i guess you could call it i had to get to a place where it was just like listen you're literally upset because things are working out for me and i had to start looking at people for what they were and that was difficult too you know because it hurts it hurts it does and so it's easy for me to say being past that and trust me when I say I lost a lot of people around me because blessings started happening in my life and it's crazy how blessings will clear things out of your life so it's like while the greatest things were happening in my life I was losing a lot of close connections and it was it was difficult but you know what at the same time too and I've said this before 
God, the Most High, also brought me you guys into my life too at the same time. And so it was like I was able to connect with a lot of you guys, even though I don't know you guys personally, I was able to connect with a lot of you guys who were either going through similar situations or on some sort of journey. And I was really able to, it was very therapeutic in a way. So, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. And this could be something, I'm not saying this is something that's going to happen for some of, for, for you guys, but this, there is something here that I'm picking up where this nine of coins doesn't feel as shiny and beautiful and peaceful as it's supposed to for some of you guys here. And it's because of the people around you projecting on to you. And like I said, I get it. I've been there. It's difficult. It's not easy, but spirits got your back and guess who else has your back? You do. Okay. And so don't feel guilty about whatever may start working out in your life. Um, especially when other people try to make you feel guilty. That's when it's, that's when it's time for you to be even more proud of yourself and where you're headed and where you're going. Don't allow people to take that from you. Okay, so it's time for you to step into your nine of coins, self-made power and abilities pile too. There's some sort of like star power or something that you are very good at, but you may try to suppress it with the full in reverse. It's a skill and, you, and you'd be shocked at people that are like jealous about the fact that you have a skill. You could be good at like magic tricks and you're going to piss somebody off because they're just like they're mad that you're good at that you know and it's like they're not even interested in, in magic or or whatever it may be but they're going to be mad at the fact that you are good at something and this is because so many people feel as though they're wasting their lives in the collective collectively there's a lot of people that are not connected to a sense of purpose we're always connected to our purpose you can't be disconnected from it because very simply you are your purpose manifested into a physical human incarnation okay so you are the purpose a lot of people don't feel worthy enough of that though to even bring that to the surface um to even embrace their purpose and what they're good at it takes a lot of courage to do that and you are doing that fool in reverse pile too it takes a lot of courage it takes a lot of courage to be full the fool upright when he's like you know what what I have here is just not enough. I feel like there's something out there calling for me. I don't know where the hell this is going to lead, but I'm going to walk towards it anyways. Do you know how much courage that takes? And you're doing it, pile two. And some of you guys, pile two, you're either going to do this or you have been doing this alone. Nine of coins. This is an individual independent card. She's alone in this card. Again, okay, so... A lot of you guys, you have to go through this transition of where things start working out for you alone. And that's not very easy. We have two cards here that talks about people doing things alone. Okay, so the Fool talks about taking um, a step forward by itself. And the Nine of Coins talks about being a receiver of opportunities, blessings, and abundance alone. So that's a very, it can be, you know, like they say, it's lonely at the top. There's a sense of that coming through here for some of you as you're making this transition into more of this Nine of Coins sort of like energy and um, opportunities coming through for you. You contain some sort of star power, something that you're good at, and you might be trying to bury that or um, suppress that with this uh, full in reverse right here. You may play, you may like downplay your own self and skills and abilities and opportunities a lot with the full in reverse. But listen, again, full card is a very exciting energy because he's just stepped out to begin some sort of journey. He has no direction, no clue as to where this is going to take him, who he is going to meet, what he is going to experience. My pile too, some of you guys' best experiences, best days, you haven't even seen yet. And you've got the nine of pentacles right here. Some of you guys are seeing things that it's like, oh my God, this is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Nope, you're gonna you're gonna be very shocked moving into the future. It's the unknown that makes the full card so magical. It's the literal manifestation of creative energy, um, which is why the full card is ruled by Uranus. This is the mad scientist planet in astrology. He's wacky, he's crazy, he's unpredictable, um, and he also rules free will. And that's what we see in the full. The full decides, mm -hmm. hey, you know what? I might not have much, I might not own much, I might not even own a direction or a purpose at this point in my life but what I do own is my own free will and my own decisions and I'm going to choose 
choose or decide to step out on faith and just to see where this takes me. You right now are the literal manifestation of creative energy. And it's like there's some sort of great idea that is coming to you or has been within your spirit. It's been harboring within your spirit. And it is so exciting to be in those planning stages where you don't know how the finished product is going to come together. But it's such an exciting time to be alive and to create. You might not know where something is about to lead you, but you know it's going to become something. You can feel that. And again, this is an exciting card despite him being totally clueless as to what the future holds. But because we know the entire major and minor arcana, we know how the cards themselves play out. So we know the fool ends up being led right back home to himself. So in reverse, this is telling me that you have an idea of how some sort of venture opportunity will play out. Like for instance, you know if you take this great job or opportunity, you'll more than likely have to move away from your family. You know there's massive life changes in store with a really exciting proposition coming your way, or it has already presented itself to you. Maybe you've seen it in a dream even, but there is a reluctance because again, you're aware of the price for this opportunity. Nine of coins says this is a great move for you, but again, your spirit is so compassionate and considerate that you are thinking about what you may have to leave behind. The ocean and the spirits of the ocean says you are ready for this and that you are not betraying anyone by looking out for you because again, the fool just gets led right back home to himself. And this is why that calling sounds so familiar to you guys. This is why you recognize that song that your intuition has been singing to you because it's literally your future self on the other side of your present right now that's saying, hey, come this way, come over here. This is why you trust it. This is why the fool trust that he's he doesn't know where he's going but he trusts the journey that's because he is the journey so this is about you guys being led right back to yourself this is why you trust it this is why you know that you have to step out and and go this way you know you have to go into a different direction it may take you away from um your fam what what you're familiar with and what you're comfortable with but again it's because it's leading you to you it's leading you to a part of you that maybe you're not as accustomed to just yet. So if someone has been, I don't know if someone has been guilt tripping you, um, or you know, maybe that's how they're going to respond once they hear what is being offered to you, once they hear where you're going, what you've got planned, what you're doing, keep it to yourself right now as well too, pile two, especially if that feels natural if that feels instinctive for you to protect something to protect some sort of idea to protect some sort of opportunity to protect some sort of offer that comes in keep it to yourself for now this fool card in reverse keeps coming through as an offer um i'm not entirely sure why but it's a new offer that you are going to sit on for a little while this is going to be something where you are initially really excited about it but then you start thinking about breaking this news um another thing coming through with this message is affirmations pile two the nine of coins it says affirm affirm to yourself that your your wildest dreams because your energy your sense of value is very in alignment with what it is that you want this is why there are so many deals and opportunities blessings being drawn towards you nine of coins okay right here even if you are not ready to act on them just yet with the full in reverse you are literally radiating this energy of wealth prosperity abundance independence with this nine of coins it's leaving the familiar behind that's causing the reluctance with full in reverse the ocean is saying give yourself permission to take care of you especially if you have grown equipped to taking care of everyone else um, or to putting opportunities to the side because you are considering other people it's time for you Okay, so it's your time right now to make the moves that you've been dreaming and fantasizing about or to take the deals and opportunities that you have been focused on attracting that you've been working towards with the nine of coins here being ruled by Virgo. Um, so nine of coins says you've earned this. Virgo is all about what you are worthy of, what you deserve because you have put the effort and the work and intention in. So you see how this bird as well has like landed on her hand. It's as though she's called for it. You see that? It's as though she's called for it and it came directly to her. My pile twos have had to condition or train yourself to attract in this type of nine of cups energy because you had to work for it. This card, again, it's ruled by Virgo. So it's a very systematic type of sign. It's all about habits and maintenance. 
um, a system, an, an operating system. So you are programmed to your blessings and they are programmed to you the way you program a crystal to your own person, right? And that's what is happening with these opportunities and blessings coming in. These blessings and opportunities are in direct alignment with you. It's time. So of course, go off of your own intuition, but the ocean spirits are communicating and saying, it's time to let this wave of new beginnings take you elsewhere. This is what is lying within the depths of your subconscious as well, Pile 2. Um, it may even be a little bit of a fear right now with the full in reverse. Um, so this may even be laying within the depths of your unconscious at this point. Um, but again, these are in alignment with you. So um, let, let the wave of new beginnings take you elsewhere and to leave some things behind. Give yourself permission to leave some things behind with full and reverse right here. You want to take everything and everyone with you, Pile 2, with this full and reverse right here. But does the fool take an entire camp or community with him? No, he doesn't. He barely takes all the supplies and resources with him that he'll need. And it's simply because he doesn't know what's to come and where he'll be led. So you're being guided to separate from some people, places, and things that you've been attached to because your energy is no longer in alignment with it, especially when it comes to connecting to this nine of coins energy. Um, and so this is why you may be feeling a sense of guilt because you're leaving something behind, but it's just you leaving the nest pile to a baby bird does not feel guilty about leaving the nest. It is appropriate. It is necessary and critical for that bird's survival to leave the nest. Okay, so no matter what age you are and what stage of your life you are in, that does not matter. It is time to leave this nest that you have been sort of like um, incubating in, for, for instance. And so the beautiful thing about the ocean is she is one. As large as she is, she is one body. You are not leaving anything behind in your heart and subconscious. As far as when it comes to love and connection, emotional connection, true connections, true connections where unconditional love is at the center of it, you're not leaving that behind. You can't leave that behind. There's a reason why even when you know people move on to the next realm, we're still connected to them in terms of love. We don't forget about them. They don't forget about us. So you can't leave anything behind that you truly love and that truly loves you. But as far as the journey, it is time to, to separate from something, from something, someone, um, some sort of familiarity, something like that. It's time. Okay, so let's get some additional messages from my pile twos. What do you guys need to hear? Additional messages from the ocean. This turned over. We have here the flamingo. You don't have to do it alone. Nurture your close relationship. So you guys, this is about, again, like I said, some of you guys, you feel like you can't leave something or someone behind. You see how they're like, they're so connected. You see that? And they're even making like a little heart right here. And it says you don't have to do it alone. Okay, so whatever it is that you guys think you're moving towards and you feel as though you have to do something alone, you actually don't. You actually don't. There is going to be some sense of community. There is going to be some sense of connection. There is going to be some sense of where, wherever it is that you think you're going to be isolated or alone, you actually won't be. Um, nurture your close relationships. Like I said, when it comes to the people that we truly love and they truly love us, you can't leave them behind. That's impossible. Not even space, um, not even time, not even death can separate us from the people that we have these true, genuine, loving connections to. Um, we never forget them. We never really, truly move on from them. So you're not leaving anything behind. If you, if you think and you're worried about it, like some people, they have a difficult time, just for instance, um, going out of state to college or something maybe because they're very close to their their siblings or their parents and it's really difficult to leave them behind or maybe it's like let's just say for example it's really difficult to leave behind a grandparent going to college and it's like they're getting older and I feel really bad about leaving them behind you're not doing this alone and another thing too with this card that's coming through the people that genuinely love you okay the people that genuinely love you they do not see you as leaving them behind they don't see that. They don't see this as you choosing between them and you or you choosing between them and an opportunity coming in or them in your life. They don't see that mm -hmm. and they're not going to put that pressure on you. So the right people for you pile to the people that genuinely love you, truly love you, they're not going to feel as though you're leaving them behind. They're going to feel as though, hey, you know, babe, this is necessary. You have to leave the nest again. 
the parents of that baby bird does not see that baby bird as like, oh my God, how dare you abandon us? No, it's survival. You have to move on. You have to move forward. So this is beautiful. So nurture your closest relationships um, and understand that you're not going to be doing this alone. The right people, they're, yeah, they're not going to feel that way. Underneath the deck, I'm going to shuffle for one more, but underneath the deck, we have mermaid. Embrace change. Exactly. Embrace change, transformation, and adaptability. It's time for you guys to embrace change. Full in reverse. You guys have been, it's your time. It's your time. It's your time. And you're a mermaid. Some of you guys may be very, very drawn to mermaids. Um, you may believe in them. You may have seen them in a dream. When you visit the water or the ocean, you may get messages. You may get into the stream of consciousness. And it's it could be coming from the ocean spirits. Let me get another one for you. Hold on. Uh, this kind of flipped over, but I'm going to keep shuffling. Uh, the green flash, the impossible is possible. I'm going to keep shuffling now. Okay, we have here the crab. I feel like both of these are for you. Um, it says the crab, consider the unconventional, take a sideways approach. Oh, kind of like how the crabs move sideways. Some of you guys, you may be cancers, but do something on a full moon as well. Full moons may be really calling to you. Um, so if, if so, if you can visit the full moon or visit the ocean during a full moon, something about that's very significant. A, there may be some sort of an ocean spirit that wants to connect to you on a full moon. Um, or if you don't live next to the ocean or if you can't get out to the ocean, ocean during a full moon, just focus on the ocean, um, during a full moon. When you're looking up at the moon, think about the ocean, focus on the ocean, try to connect to the spirit of the ocean and some sort of stream of consciousness is going to come through for you guys. But consider the unconventional take a sideways approach. So um, that's the full and reverse card right here. And we also have here driftwood and it says now is not the time to be fixated. Practice flexibility. Exactly. Don't just don't cut yourself off from this full um this full experience, this full and reverse experience, this nine of coins experience. Don't cut yourself off from that. Practice flexibility. Understand that leaving the nest is your birthright, okay? It is your birthright. I don't care what age you are. You could be have just turned 18, 19, 20, 21 years old. You could be moving into your 60s or 70s. This is your time to leave the nest yet again, okay? So um, yeah, some of you guys are life path ones or something like that. It's a lot of like... I feel like you guys are are always going to go through this experience of having to leave something behind and it's it's something that's like a life path experience for you or something. I don't know. Um so some of you guys could be a master love master one of the master numbers could be your life path 112233. Um then we have underneath the deck tsunami. Now's the time to confront your stressors. What are you avoiding? This is that full in reverse right here. You guys are trying to avoid the tsunami of oh my god, what is someone else going to think? Or like for instance, if there's this job offer that comes in that you have been wanting, praying, manifesting, but and it's like you get it and you're so excited, but then it's like oh my god, I have to go quit my current job. How are they going to feel? How are they going to take this? They're made, there's just like a little bit of concern. Like I kept picking up your entire reading. It's like you're trying to avoid some sort of stressor here by moving forward or by taking some sort of opportunity or offer or by starting off in some new beginning. You guys are trying to, you're worried about how someone's going to take it. And with tsunami right here, this is like an emotional, overwhelming sort of thing here. So some of you guys are truly worried about that, but don't because again, it's your birthright pile too. Let's get one final message from the ocean here. See what it wants to say to you. Hold on. What do we have? We have space. May your heart and your scope expand. I'm going to keep shuffling now. Okay. We have here. Ooh. Did that just change? It did, didn't it? Okay, whatever. Anyways, we have here, I'm going to read both of these. Oh, look, and it's 444 on my clock right now. Did I tell you guys 444 earlier? Because I saw 414 and thought that it was 444. Yeah, I think you were that pile. So 
444. Watch out for that number, you guys. You may be seeing it a lot. It may be very significant. You may be, if you get a lot of tarot readings done, the emperor may be like following you around everywhere or the four of wands, four of pentacles, um, four of swords, four of cups that may be following you around all over the place. Okay. So watch out for four. Um, but we have here powerful. May you be as potent as the ocean. Beautiful. So there's power in you guys taking your birthright in your hands and walking into this new beginning or this next chapter and then we also have your stretch may you extend your reach this is about you so you guys have a reach to extend like i said you guys have some sort of a star power here this nine of coins for some of you guys is talking about you being far reaching in the in the in the sense that it's like like let's say that you love creating music your music is supposed to expand or it's supposed to reach a lot of people okay so there's some sort of star power that you guys have it's whatever it is that you guys are blessed with this skill set this idea this passion that you have you're meant to reach or touch a lot of people you're meant to have a lot of different experiences you're meant to always be in almost like this full state and the crazy thing is is that a lot of my pile twos, you guys would love nothing more than to just find a nice, comfortable home or a nice, comfortable spot and just sit there. But your life and your calling is pushing you to all these new places and all these new heights. And it's uncomfortable for a lot of you. And that I think that's why I was picking up. Some of you feel a little guilty because you're like, trust me, I want to stay here and stay around what's familiar and comfortable for me, too. Like, I don't want to move forward, you know? But there's a sense of you having to. Um, and underneath the deck here, we have forgive. May you let it be. So if there is somebody that has taken, I'll also read this out of the book. If there is somebody that has taken this new opportunity for you, and like I was talking about earlier, they've really made you feel ashamed or guilty about it, try to forgive when you can, if you can. Really try to forgive. Because you moving into this next chapter, it does not need to be tainted by somebody trying to make you feel guilty do not allow them to take this from you okay all right let's read this out of the book okay so forgive says may you let it be reflection the sea clears the mind and heart of resentments and guilt mm, yeah that's why i was picking up that blessings guilt like i was talking about earlier it says it soothes the harsh ache of blame and absolves failure Ooh. okay it says in the water the tenderness of human vulnerability cannot be concealed each wave recalls our ability to release and renew blessings here attached to this card says may you find safe spaces to release anger may you allow that you did all you could with what you knew then it says may you gently rewrite the stories that bring you pain mantra here says in the water i forgive release and renew okay and then stretch here for you says May you extend your reach. Reflection is the sea tests your willingness to extend your capacity for movement, the limits of your endurance. It asks you to leave the safety of familiar land. Exactly. You guys are supposed to leave the familiar. Like I said, it's your birthright to leave the nest. It says it asks you to leave the safety of familiar land and explore the space between your desire to change and your capacity to stretch into unknown territory. That's exactly this full card in reverse all day. Blessings attached to this card says, may you grow, may you allow yourself to be more, may you extend beyond your current beliefs, may you find suppleness and strength. Mantra attached to this card says, I stretch to open, to soften, and to grow. You guys are meant to grow. You're in, a, you're in the season of growth right now. And honestly, like I said, this feels attached to your incarnation or your life path. So I feel like you guys are constantly in this state of like you get comfortable somewhere and you love it. And then it's like, boom, you're in this energy, full card energy. Like it's time for a new chapter. And you guys are so uncomfortable about it. And this is why some of you guys feel guilty as well, because it's like, I'm also picking up for some of you guys where you're just like, listen, I don't want to move on either. I don't want to do this either. Like I'm, I just got here, you know, or I just got settled here or I just created a life here or um, a community or space here. And now I've got to move on. You know, um, it, we have here powerful. It says, may you be as potent as the ocean. Reflection says the power of the sea is immense and potent. It can devastate and reshape the world in its path. It can hold miracles tend to the tiniest of life forms, evolve and nourish an, an entire ecosystem. The sea is the power to nurture and to destroy. Blessing says, may you know your own power. May you allow your gifts to be seen. Exactly. You guys have gifts. Like I said, you guys have a star power. Your gifts are meant to be seen by a lot of people. 
okay? And this is why you're not allowed to stay in one place for too long, pile two. It says, may you allow your gifts to be seen. May you believe in your ability to change everything for the better, period. And it says, mantra, I hold the power of the ocean within me, beautiful. And pile two, this is all that I'm saying for you guys. Thank you so very much for tuning in. Let me take this time to thank your guides. My guides, our higher self, amazing spirit for these messages and the ocean as well for coming through and delivering these beautiful messages. Hopefully you all come back to visit sometime soon. And until next time, stay safe, healthy, blessed, and keep conquering the world. Bye, you guys. All right, pile number three. Welcome to your reading. So we are starting off with your tarot cards and I'm going to be pulling some additional oracle cards on camera just to get some messages from the ocean or the spirits of the ocean and ocean spirits. Um, so it's up to you guys how you want to connect to this reading. If you want to see this as a reading from the ocean and the spirits of the ocean herself, or if you want it to kind of see this as a message from your own conscious depths uh, because a lot of people throughout time have connected the ocean to different levels of our own consciousness like the conscious of conscious and unconscious but yeah it's up to you guys how you want to see this reading um, if you want to see it as a message from the ocean or a message from different levels of your conscious in whatever ways you resonate with it is totally up to you but anyways let's just get started so the first tarot card that we have for you pile three you got the ten of cups It reminds me of like a wedding cake for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe it's just like the layers and then like normally there's like little figurine or something on top of wedding cakes, right? So, yeah. Don't know why I'm seeing that. And then um, we have here the nine of cups in reverse. Okay. First thing I heard while looking at this Ten of Cups here is just in terms of a soulmate. So I don't know if um, um, that is a very specific message. It's not for everyone in this pile. Um, but for those of you that are wondering if you're going to meet somebody that you would feel connected enough to to make some sort of a long term commitment like marriage or, you know, consider them a life partner or soulmate or a twin flame, even however it is that you see it. Um, that is definitely in store for you with this Ten of Cups over here. And then Nine of Cups in reverse is definitely in store for you. You're not meant um, to be alone in that way. You are meant to share your life with someone very special and very important at some point. But that was just something that I immediately needed to get out of the way. Now, another thing that I'm picking up here is frustration, which is weird because the Ten of Coin or the Ten of Cups is such a happy card. It's a joyful card, but I'm hearing someone say, why can't we be a family? Or why can't we just be fucking happy? Why is it so difficult to be happy together? There's possibly a community or a family or a group of individuals that are near and dear to your heart, but there's a lot of confusion at the center of it. And this is interesting. This reminds me of, um, for my people on Patreon, you guys are seeing this reading um, before it gets to YouTube. And I just posted a collective reading a general reading for the collective as we um, start rolling into eclipse season here. And a message similar to that did come up, actually. A message very similar to that of like, I forget how I said it in that collective reading, but it it's, it's similar to this. Oh, in that collective reading, I mentioned um, somebody ruining a good thing. It's like they took something beautiful and ruined it. And that's kind of a little bit of what I'm picking up here, but just more so like, why is it so difficult to just be happy? There's like a group of individuals from my pile threes, possibly community or family, something like that, that's very near and dear to your heart. But again, there's a lot of um, discord or confusion at the center of it. And it's like you are happy, your happiest um, or most at peace when you are away from this group of people. And that feels very backwards to you, to some of my pile threes with this nine of cups in reverse. Um, because it's like, I'm not supposed to feel better the further away I am from my own team, from my own unit, from my own family, from my own people. It's frustrating too, because the issues that I'm picking up are petty AF. For some of you as well, what's coming through is this isn't necessarily like maybe your own family or your own community, but this is human beings in general. This is this for some of my pile threes this is very collective. This could be something that's going on in your own country something that's happening in your own um your own community in your own nation 
where it's just it's very it's very difficult you're it's like you're disappointed with maybe your own countrymen or maybe like human beings in general just very disappointed very disappointed um like i said for some of you this has to do with like your own community or your own family for others of you this is a bit more broad it's a bit more broad and like i said the issues that i'm i'm picking up anyways as the reader they feel petty as fuck i'm not gonna lie like it's not something that can't just be like dropped and forgiven and moved on from especially when it comes to those personal connections for those of you that are dealing with this within like your family for instance right it's not like it's something that can't be forgiven and moved on from but some of you feel like something doesn't want you to be happy or something won't allow you to be happy some of you feel as though you know for a fact you're dealing with like um maybe like a narcissist for instance and this is the this is the goal uh, with the Ten of Cups. Um, that's how the card is coming through anyways. And the Nine of Cups in reverse, it feels like I don't want this. I don't want to only have peace when I'm alone. Because it's like you're looking at this as, as a waste. What's the point in having all these people around? Or what's the point in having a family if every time we come together there's a problem? You may look at this very long term like we're wasting our time arguing about... Sorry you guys, my fire alarm went off. It's just been the most random noises and disturbances in today's reading. Um, I don't know if some of you guys maybe it could have just been something happening on my end, but um, normally when things like that happen, it could have something to do, especially while I'm doing a reading. Sometimes it has something to do specifically with some with someone in the reading. So um, you guys could have had like a fire alarm went off at some point today um or during the reading while you're listening or it could be more like metaphorical where it's like emergency right so it could even be like I'm, i've been talking about your closest relationships or just dealing with other people there could be some sense of urgency or an emergency um in some of your relationships that you're taking it as and you guys again you guys just my pile three is you guys just want peace <laughs> you're sick of the fire alarms going off in your closest relationships so that could have something to do with you guys here kind of metaphorically or symbolically or again it could have just been from my end but anyways um yeah it's like what was I saying yeah some of you guys look at something as like th these issues are making us waste time together we're wasting energy on these on these issues and it's not even going to matter ultimately in the, in the in the long term or in the long run this won't even matter um yeah, you guys may look at this as like it's a waste of time arguing about things that just won't matter. So you or someone else in this group may have even said that or maybe even had a vision like in the end when we are burying each other, for instance. I mean, it might sound a little morbid, but some of you guys here have had you look at it that way. Like when we're burying each other, none of this is going to matter. We're not even going to remember why we weren't speaking or why there was um issues here why there was discord it's like you have the gift of foresight my pile threes and can see regret assembling itself in real time so you can actually see who's going to regret what in the end and you are trying to keep people from creating their own demise but they just won't listen i would say this is ego involved here but this feels slightly different and i'm trying to pinpoint what this feels like because it's not just ego it's it's not just being right it's more so like a blindness so like someone or people don't see how this doesn't matter. And your whole thing is don't let it take tragedy to bring us together. It's hard at times to keep up with who was mad at what, who did what. And it's so ridiculous from your end when, for example, it's like you're just trying to throw your toddler a birthday party and people are making this beautiful moment of celebration about some petty ass argument or disagreement. Or it's like people are like, oh, OK, well, who's going to be there? You know, I don't want to come by if, if so-and-so is going to be there. And it's like, it's it's just my three-year-old's birthday party, you know? <laughs> and so it's um there's times where some of you are like, we're not inviting anyone over for the holidays. Someone here either 
got married as well because I keep seeing like a wedding cake with this ten of cups right here so someone here either got married without inviting one side of the family or is contemplating that if you're currently like maybe planning um your nuptials or a wedding or something like that some of you guys are contemplating not inviting your family or some of your family members and this hurts so so bad with nine of cups in reverse because it's like this is getting in the way of happiness and happy moments and happy times you will remember it's like it's like you guys are so um there's a lot of wisdom here you guys don't see it as wisdom you guys see it as like common damn sense it's like listen i'm gonna remember like my wedding for for example for the rest of my life what you guys aren't going to remember is why you guys didn't show up to my wedding because you're arguing about some stupid shit <laughs> that's what i'm picking up energetically here um as the reader anyways something's definitely getting in the way of like happy moments happy times for sure your whole thing is let's enjoy each other now while we can the ocean and her spirits have a message for you pile three and it's a very simple one to give this to god this ten of cups it literally also kind of looks like an altar it also looks like an altar so the fact oh i just saw 12 12 too so 12 12 could be very significant for some of you guys you may be saying 12 12 a lot um you guys may have a lot of pisces neptune energy a lot of 12th house energy in your natal chart or there could be a lot of transits happening in your own 12th house right now this also looks like an altar so the fact that I'm seeing a wedding cake slash altar, this could sort of be about how your relationships are just, they have a lot of your attention right now, or they're pulling a lot of your energy right now. Because when we set up altars, what do we do at altars? We pray at them. We we set intentions um, at them, or we we do a lot of spiritual work around altar spaces. You know, it's where we focus a lot of energy. So we pour a lot of energy into our altars and our altar spaces. So this could also be saying like symbolically, um, your relationships right now are such a priority or they're pulling so much energy from you. And they've, they've got a lot of your, they're holding a lot of your focus, a lot of your attention. And so a lot of your intentions right now may be focused on bringing more peace into the family dynamics, bringing more peace into your closest relationships, bringing more peace into your country, even um, bringing more peace to humanity. Even you guys may be very focused on that because you, some of you guys here are empaths with the nine of cups and ten of cups showing up some of you guys are empaths and you're just sick of being able to feel the collective's energy you're you're sick of being able to like feel all of the these chaotic um or very negative or, or very depressive energetic states or very heavy energies you're sick of feeling those and so some of you guys have even set up an altar for maybe your the, your country so there's more peace in your country so there's more peace in humanity this doesn't just have to be within your family and community and like local area this could be about you guys like setting intentions or praying to your altar praying to um the ocean praying to the sky praying to the most high heal humanity we need help here you know that could that could also be happening there's so much suffering right so um this could be another thing that you guys are doing because you guys are naturally empathic uh with the nine of cups ten of cups showing up this is all pisces energy pisces is so connected um that pisces pisces is one of those signs where i say it can feel so much that pisces is one of those easier signs where it's it can feel numb very easily too because it feels too much and i've always thought that that's why pisces and neptune is connect to like <laughs> drug use and stuff like that um that's something that you can see astrologically dealing with neptune people with like neptune in the first house um they can really struggle with substance abuse because they they feel too much and they don't know what to make of it they don't know how they, they and it's hard to find help for that um I understand that I have Neptune in the first house. That was one of the first things that I learned um, getting into astrology. And I was like, oh, my God, that it connected me so much to that. I mean, I've always liked exploring tr like trippy mental states and stuff like that. But um, it's just it's always been like an experience for me. But the darker side of that is also to using certain altered states to disconnect from whatever the reality is from whatever you're going through and that can be very um heavy on a 
the heavily Pisces influenced person. So you don't have to be a Pisces. You don't have to have a lot of Pisces energy going on. Um, Neptune doesn't have to be in your first house. You don't have to have like, you could have these things going on, but you don't have to for this reading to apply to you. Okay. Um, you guys could have some oppositions where your personal planets are opposing Neptune in your own natal chart. You could have a lot of personal planets conjunct Neptune in your natal chart. Neptune could be in your first house, could be sitting next to um, your ascendant sign. It could also be sitting next to your descendant sign or in your 12th house because um, we can see that pop up a lot too, uh, where I've seen it in astrological charts where it heavily plays into um, the different coping mechanisms that people apply when it comes to their reality. You want to look at Neptune and Pisces in the 12th house to see how people cope with things um, emotionally. So um, yeah, but again, that doesn't have to be the case for this reading to apply to you. This is why though, this is another reason why for you, Pile 3, it's so important for you to know when to give up certain things to God because it just, it weighs too heavily on my Pile 3s. And one reason that it does is because again, you're a very, very, very gifted empath, okay? We all have empathic abilities, just as incarnate beings we take on we inherit empathic abilities um which is why we can ringing in my right ear slight ringing um but this is why we can this is why we can um pull information and data uh from people that we don't even know from different realms you know we can just be standing beside someone and instantly pick up what they're going through or instantly feel whatever it is that they're feeling in their body or hear a certain thought that might be cycling through their mind. This is why, because we have that auric field, which allows us to have empathic abilities. Empathy is just all about being able to, uh, in some way, shape or form, briefly feel or experience what another being is feeling or experiencing. And this is what happens when we're sentient beings. So, But when it comes to my pile threes, when it comes to somebody that's deeply empathic, that means that you have spent lifetimes, if you believe in incarnation, reincarnation, um, that means that many of you have spent lifetimes owning that empathic skill, lifetimes doing it to the point to where it's like, you just know, boom, <laughs> you get close enough to someone, you know exactly what they're feeling, what they're going through. Um, it can almost, in a way, too, create disassociation, disassociation um, within yourself. It can almost create a little bit of division within the self where it's, it's difficult to pinpoint what you're feeling and experiencing versus what other people are. And this is why I'm going to repeat it and say it again. The ocean is saying to you, pile three, give it to God. Just give it to God. Um, and again, with this Ten of Cups, it does, it looks like an altar space it, or it looks like something is being sacrificed or surrendered as well um, With on this card here because you can't fix all of this discourse on your own. It's stressful taking up the duty of keeping everyone together and keeping the peace between especially adult parties. That's a, that's a very stressful situation. Um, the ocean is saying, just have joy. And whoever wants to be a part of it, let them. And whoever wants to miss out on that because they're too blind to see what they're missing out on at the moment, let them miss it. You have the gift, okay, pile three, again, of empathy because you're such an old soul. You've done this life thing so many times here on earth, which is why you are hyper aware of what happens at the end because you, you've you experienced life from beginning to end very many times okay you're not a new soul and so it's like you can almost remember the moments that you have had at the end where that hangman moment hits you and you realize wow none of this even mattered you have had that experience so many different times okay you have you have passed on from one incarnation been reincarnated boom you're back you're back here again you go through your whole life you come to the end of it and that same feeling or thought always pops up for you. None of this even mattered. And so it's it's very familiar for you to live in this state of none of this matters. None of this matters, which is why many of you guys at in this current incarnation um it may have taken some time with both of these cups cards being here. It may have taken some time for you guys to, to learn how to detach from everyone else's emotions. It may have taken some time for that. 
but you know that a lot of this doesn't matter, not enough to hold on to the stress and the pain. And it may be difficult, but pile three, another thing that I'm saying is the ocean saying she's preparing or sending souls your way that have the same priority where they just want to be, let's just be happy together. Let's just enjoy life. And it's incredible how some people complicate such a simple thing like joy, right? Like, I don't know why we do that as human beings. We complicate it so much. We make it so much more complex than what it needs to be. And joy is so easy because all you have to do is just be. But some people don't realize the beautiful gift that joy is. And the anger, misery, or pain in them will not allow them to see it. You have a gift of foresight, pile three. You know what's truly going to matter in the end. And so the people that are just wrapped in misery and pain and they're too prideful or too stubborn to allow joy and peace in, they end up missing out. But pile three, it is their choice, which means it's their price to pay, not yours. So let's say for some of you, you've just never been able to get along with your family or siblings, for instance, siblings is coming through, um, or it's just, it's never been easy. The ocean is saying she's blessing you with a family of your own, whether biologically or not. Doesn't matter if it's blood or not. Um, maybe this is socially, maybe it's romantically, but she is sending you a sense of family and camaraderie that cannot be destroyed by bitterness. There we go. That's what it is. There's bitterness that won't allow peace to just be in some sort of, of space or connection in your life right now for a lot of my pile threes. There's some bitterness here and no one really knows where it stems from. Um, at least I'm not picking it up, but the ocean as well as the most high, the ocean is an extension of the most high, but it's saying I'm sending you peace, love, and joy. Even if it means not having some people be a part of those beautiful moments, that's what's being sent to you. Let's get some oracle cards for you, pile three. Okay, just had to sneeze. Sorry. So let's get some oracle cards for you, pile three. Some additional messages. Let me just see what this is. The sand dollar prosperity is within reach. What was poking out? The sea urchin maneuver with tenacity. Be methodical. I'm going to keep shuffling because I like for the cards to kind of come out one by one let me shuffle these okay let's see let's get a card for you pile three what else does the ocean want to say to my pile threes okay we have here this also fell out it's a stack of cards though so um but we have here pure do not fear the unknown find serenity in the uncertain so yeah okay so then for a lot of you guys whatever it is that you're going through right now it's, it's almost like a because this pier looks like a bridge to me and so this is you guys have another thing with piers is we stand on them and we're able to we're able to stand above water stand above the ocean um which is what bridges do you know they kind of they connect us in a lot of ways to other sides that we wouldn't be able to get to so for you guys, pile three, um, another thing with this peer card that what it's telling me it is this is the reason why you guys are so blessed and gifted with empathy is because it's like you're standing on a pier. So it's like you guys are you have this like detached third person point of view from all this discord. You're able to see very clearly what it is. You're able to see very clearly what's at the center of it. You're able to see very clearly, again, that none of this matters. You guys are literally standing above the ocean. What does the ocean esoterically represent? Emotion, instinct, intuition, the moon. This is moon, lunar energy, feminine, um, sacral chakra energy, where the emotions um, and a lot of the things that are kind of uh, stuck in the consciousness, different levels of the consciousness is what the ocean symbolically holds on to you guys are standing above all that on a pier you're standing above all that on a pier so you're able to stand above your emotions in a sense and stand and stand emotionally above the situation at the core of this unit or or your family or um an important connection in your life or even when it comes to the collective even when it comes to humanity so some of you guys are even healers because you're able to just stand above the 
Um, you're able to stand above the ocean in a way when it comes to other people. Other people may be drawn to you or come to you and will say, I need help with this, this, and this. They can't see their way out of their own woods. You know, um, it's kind of like there are some people are just kind of trapped in the depths of the ocean. Like they're in it. Meanwhile, you, you're kind of, you're not, you're not even in the water. That's what I'm picking up with Pierre here. Um, but yeah, do not fear the unknown and find serenity in the uncertain. And the uncertain here would be this kind of discourse and this chaos. This also fell out, but I'm going to keep shuffling. It says, Pearl, wisdom is found in truth. Yeah, that's what you guys are able to see. It's, it's the truth of the matter. That's why you guys are kind of standing above this ocean on this pier here. Underneath the deck, though, we have the fish. Find balance. Again, this is that Pisces energy. You guys have a lot of Pisces energy going on. Or there's a lot of Pisces energy at the center of this experience. Just this ability to deeply feel. Okay, so we also have here, we've got Anchor. It says, be hopeful and choose optimism. Okay, so be hopeful and choose optimism. And, and then we... Heatway was also underneath anchor. It says, follow your passion. What ignites your soul? So for some of you guys, just focusing on whatever this, whatever this confusion is or whatever may be happening in some of your relationships, it just keeps coming up relationships or other people. So whatever is happening there, um, focus on your passions. Give this situation, this chaos to God and focus on what makes you happy. Focus on your passions. Focus on that. And then like it says right here with anchor, be hopeful and choose optimism. That's what's going to anchor you is by remaining hopeful, by staying optimistic. Like I said earlier, looking at your tarot cards, um, oh, and the fish, fine balance was underneath the deck again. I got to leave this out for you guys. I have to. But yeah, with the anchor right here, this is another thing that I was saying um, with just your tarot cards earlier was like, I heard the ocean spirit saying and the most high saying, if somebody wants to miss out on these happy moments, let them, let them. If there's some happy moments and some things that you have to celebrate alone or with less people because they're allowing whatever this petty ass energy is to get in the middle of experiencing these, these life changing moments, let them miss out on it. For you, be hopeful and choose optimism. That's what's going to keep you anchored. Let's get some final cards for my pile of threes. I'm going to read these out of the book for you. We have here play. May you seek out fun and connection. Exactly. Just focus on play and connection. Oh, dolphins may be very significant for you guys as well. I forget which. Damn it. I never remember when it comes to star seas and all that stuff. Is it serious? It's connected to dolphins, Pleiades? I'm not sure, you guys. But um, look into whatever starseed may be connected to dolphins. Because like I said, yeah, I was picking that up with you guys. You guys have lived a lot of like lifetimes, okay? And you're very, 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 very connected <laughs> to your starseed empathic abilities. And underneath the deck, we have allow. May you soften into what is yes do not allow the situation to harden you so i'm gonna read both of these out of the books for you guys so give me a second okay and allow here says for you pile three reflection the sea cannot be fought or controlled or resisted yes oh allow give it to god allow just okay whatever this discord is just allow it to happen give it to god let god handle it um or the most high your ancestors angels what at your higher self, whatever it is that you, your, your deity is, your higher power is, give it to that, okay? It says, when you are in the water, the sea can only be moved through, even as it moves you. When you stop battling against, you soften into lightness, finding the power to rise. That's that ri that rising that I was saying with the pier here, you guys standing above the ocean on the pier. Okay, and then it says here, blessings attached to this card it says, may you yield, may you release judgment, Okay, so also release judgment of whoever is just acting up right now, <laughs> whether it's in your family, whether it's humanity, um, someone that you know personally or just looking at the collective as a whole, um, release judgment, release judgment, okay? And it says, may you give loving permission. May you allow the pull of the waves to lift you. Beautiful. Mantra for this card says, I make peace for the whole experience. Yes. Yeah. 
don't carry that stress with you and then with play here play yeah play says may you seek out fun and connection it says reflection the sea beckons to joyful children ageless in the water it is a gleeful promise of unconstrained fun free of self-consciousness and judgment okay yeah this is what you guys are being led to do is just being free of all this heaviness and it says here embracing play you reject limits open up to the new learn and grow blessings attached to this card says may you let go of inhibitions and preconceived outcomes may you experiment with joy may you be filled with curious wonder and the mantra for this card says i am guided by my inner child so your inner child for a lot of you guys is does have something to do with family for your inner child to come through um and so your inner child is saying let's just let's just let's just love on our own if we have to love and laugh and experience these beautiful moments on our own let's just do that but let's not allow them to take these beautiful moments from us or to taint and poison these beautiful moments with stress um from discourse and things like that but pile three this is all that i'm saying for you guys thank you so very much for tuning in let me take this time to thank your beautiful guys my beautiful guys our higher self um amazing spirit and the ocean spirits for coming through and delivering these messages today hopefully you all come back to visit sometime soon and until next time please stay safe healthy blessed and keep conquering the world bye you guys